Hi, it's Jan Beta, and as you can see, I'm back with the Sega Mega Drive. And uh, after the last video, several things happened, uh, one of which was that Andreas donated uh, some cartridges he didn't need. Uh, this is one I bought myself before I bought the EverDrive. So uh, this runs all very nicely. The thing that I got a couple of comments on is uh, that the games were made to be run on 60Hz video. So the NTSC video standard, which is um, used in Japan and in the United States. So many of the people who watched my video um, thought that the games were running slightly too slow. There is a way to mod this so that it is switchable between the NTSC and the PAL video modes. Uh, yeah, and that's what I'm going to do today. And also I'm going to add a little switch, a second switch, that switches between the uh, export and the Japanese uh, language versions. So you can switch between Japanese and English in most cases. Uh, for some games that is used. Uh, so... Yeah, I have to open this up and I'm going to add two of these little uh, switches, which are just uh, three pin, just standard sliding switches. You can use switches of whatever kind you prefer, as long as they have three uh, poles that the middle one should be connected always and the switch should switch between the two outer ones. So that's what you need. Um, I'm going to open this up. If you haven't done so, please watch the first video in the Sega Mega Drive series where I refurb this thing uh, so you know how to open this up exactly. I'm just going to do it now. There's Basically it's just a couple of screws and then you have an RF shield that you have to remove and that's it. You can get to the contacts we are concerned with today. So let's do that. Oh and by the way there are uh, mods that are switchless, so you don't need the, the physical uh, switches that I'm going to use. But this is far easier to implement. You need a pick for, or like a, a microcontroller of some sort, uh, to have a switchless mod. Uh, you can also do replace the crystal in here. The video mod we are going to do, the NTSC mod in this case, is not going to work if you are using composite output. Uh, I'm using RGB out, which this, this outputs composite and RGB and RF. And for RF and composite, the mod is not going to work because NTSC uses another uh, frequency to encode the signal that is determined by the, uh, by the crystal that's in here. And as long as you don't replace the crystal, the vast majority of uh, composite in monitors will not display the picture correctly. In most cases you don't have color and have like um, lines across the screen and stuff. If you're using RGB this is supposedly working fine. I never did it so I say supposedly but I guess it is going to be fine because RGB works in different ways. So without further ado let's just open it up and see what we can do. So here's our beautiful PCB and speaking of PCBs, check out my sponsor PCB Way if you want to make your own PCBs because they offer high quality PCB manufacturing services and the prices are very reasonable and you also get a $5 discount voucher on their website. So the area we are primarily concerned with today is this here. It has a couple of jumpers and that is uh, because Sega just made one version. They made several revisions of this board but they made one version for the whole world. So the jumpers determine which region this is set to. So the video standard is set and the language is set uh, by connecting the jumpers or disconnecting the jumpers. In this case this is European model and jumper 2 and jumper 3 have little interconnects in the middle. 
so here's our little jumpers and if you look closely there are lines printed on the silk screen but there are connections between these two uh, in the middle here which determines that this is set to non-Japanese language and to PAL video standard. Uh, the position of the jumpers varies slightly between board revisions of the Mega Drive. This is a VA6 revision board and it says ICBDM5 PAL. It also states the video standard on the board. So here's how this works. Uh, on this side, the right side, of the jumper cluster here. Uh, there is two of those are plus five volt, which is a logic uh, one high level, which are jumper two and jumper four, and uh, jumper one and jumper three are ground. On the left side, there are basically our two options. Uh, these are connected on the bottom side of the board. Uh, these two, jumper 1 and jumper 2, and jumper 3 and jumper 4, are connected. Mm. So, if this is connected to plus 5, it determines this is an export console, so it is set to English, basically. And if it is uh, connected to ground, it is set to Japanese. And this determines uh, the PAL or NTSC standard. If it is connected to ground, then it is PAL, and if it is connected to plus 5, it is NTSC. So what we are going to do is basically uh, going to add a switch, which is one of the poles is connected here, the middle pole actually, and that is toggled between ground and uh, plus 5, and the same here. So we need one connection to uh, ground, one connection to plus 5, and we are going to connect one of these pairs each. So we only need one here and one here. And we can choose whichever we want. So I'm probably going to take uh, the topmost one and the bottommost one and connect my switches up. And we should have a switchable <laughs> Sega Mega Drive then. So just for clarification, I'm just going to um, make a little drawing here again. So Jumper 1, jumper 2, jumper 3, jumper 4. These are connected. Anyway, so uh, this switches between Japan if it's ground, this is PAL if it's ground, and export if it's plus 5 and this is NTSC if it's pulled to plus 5 uh, this has plus 5 this has plus 5 volts <laughs> and these are ground so in, in my case uh, this is connected to ground and this is connected to plus 5. So jumper 2 and jumper 3 are connected in my case. In an American version, uh, the NTSC would be connected, so jumper 4 would be connected to 5 volt. Uh, and of course, to do it, to make it switchable, we have to uh, cut these connections before and connect our switches. So now switches are going to be connected one is connected here, this is our middle pin, I'm just going to, this is not uh, electrically correct, I'm just putting my little switch here. Uh, this is connected to plus 5, and this is connected to ground. <laughs> and this already looks confusing, more confusing than in real life, but uh, it is pretty easy, believe me. So. Uh, this one is going to be connected to this two-part thing, the middle one, of course, oh my god. And one of these is going to be connected to ground on the other switch, and one of these is connected to plus five on the other switch. So, this is pretty confusing, forget about that. We are just going to do it. And in order to do this in the most proper way I can, uh, I'm going to remove the board from the case.
all together. And there's another couple of screws to remove. I got one of these magnetic uh, holders because I was losing quite some screws lately. And that's probably not going to happen anymore. <laughs> there we go. First step, I'm going to cut the existing traces with this. Um, I, I think in, in the US it's called an exacto blade. This is just a cheap knockoff. And you want to scratch through the through the copper there. Which isn't that trivial, actually. So I think we're through. Of course, it's always better to test. <laughs> By the way, you can of course do this with uh, Sega Genesis, which is basically the same thing. Okay, so we don't have continuity from here to here, and we don't have continuity from here to here. Nice. So I'm going to remove the solder from the connections we actually need. And I'm just going to use uh, the top one, the bottom one, and the yeah, the, the topmost and the bottommost on both the left and the right side. So we have plenty of play uh, between our traces. And as I said, the left side is interconnected anyway. And of course, you can use your preferred tool for this. I'm just using a solder wick, which is, I think, in this case, the most reasonable way to go, probably. Let's see. Yeah, that worked pretty well. And of course, uh, some of these need some love. <laughs> and especially your ground connection is going to be pretty stubborn which is the top one here on the right because it has a larger uh, copper plane connected to it, obviously. There we go. Okay, so now I made some pretty nice holes uh, to insert stuff into, <laughs> which I am going to do. Mmm, shiny. So I have some wires here. Black is going to be my ground, uh, red is going to be plus five, yellow and green are going to be the um, switching options, <laughs> or the, the left side jumpers, basically. So, and I want to have my switches on the side here because it's the only place where there's a little space in the case. Uh, so I'm going to estimate the length of the wires. Uh, yeah. So I tinned all the wires and now I'm just going to connect them to the board. Uh, first of all I'm just going to start off with my ground that is going to co be connected on the right top. Top right. Right top? Top right. <laughs> I'm just going to solder it in from the back. Yep, there we go. And our 5 volts on the bottom right, or because this is the bottom side of the PCB, on the left side. So, okay. Uh, and we are going to use the same ground for both switches, so we're just going to make a little uh, jumper 
wire between the switches for a ground and uh, 5 volts, because that's okay, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm just going to connect the other two and then connect the switches up. <laughs> Let's double check the connections. Uh, top one is ground, which is black. Uh, bottom one is plus five on jumper four, which is red. On the left side, we have the green wire for the bottom two pads, which is our PAL NTSC. And the yellow one is our Japan and uh, export version. So we're just going to twist these wires together because it looks neater. And also, it is neater because they are going to stay together. So happy together. Looks pretty neat. Uh, let's connect the switches. First of all, I think I want to um, put this back in the case to have a, a sense of dimension. I only want to do this briefly because I uh, have to drill the case and I don't want to do that while the PCB is in there. So and here's uh, where my switches are going to go. One is going to go here and the other one is going to be uh, there, probably. I'm just going to drill some slide holes. These don't need much room. Uh, you still have to make them switchable. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to glue them in from the back side there. Yeah, so let me uh, solder this on and see if it actually works <laughs> first, before I permanently install the switches in the case. So the middle pin of each is going to be the yellow one or the uh, green one. Let's try the green one first, I guess. And I'm going to tin the contacts on the switches as well, I think. Dun, 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 dun. And then we use the black wire and the red wire for the other contacts. Doesn't matter which goes which, which goes where, I guess. So this should be our 50, 60 hertz uh, mod already. <laughs> and then we have to run another ground and another 5 volts to the other switch, which should be, mm, I think, in front there, or maybe, maybe in the back. So, these are going to be connected to the other switch on the respective uh, sides there. There we go, these are connected. There we go. Okay, now we should have our two switches for uh, PAL NTSC, or rather 50 and 60 Hz. It's not, not a full uh, PAL NTSC mod because you would have to um, switch the crystal oscillator frequency as well, but uh, we are going to have a Japanese and uh, English or export switch and a 50-60 hertz switch. Okay, and the switches are going to sit somewhere here. <laughs> nice! Okay, let's try if this works at all before we put it together. Yes! <laughs> okay, the NTSC mod works. This is NTSC. This is the uh, slower PAL. So this is NTSC. And you can see that the um, black bars on top and bottom that we have in the PAL version just vanish. So this is the actual aspe aspect ratio this was made for, uh, and the speed of the music 
slightly increased. Okay. Okay, so I definitely, I, I don't know which games work with the um, Japanese thing, but definitely we ha we now have uh, like the NTSC thing going. We should be able to play like US games. Okay, I found a game that actually um, changes stuff for a bit. Uh, there is a couple and uh, I'm going to link that in below. So this is the American version. It says Quackshot uh, starring Donald Duck. Now I'm going to switch to Japanese now. Reset the whole thing. And you are going to see that there's a, there's a Japanese uh, subtitle kind of thing. So the switch works. That's what I was going to prove with this. <laughs> the game itself appears to stay the same. So I want these here and here. Okay, let's bring out the power tools. So the last time I did something like this, uh, I earned my own meme or <laughs> I don't know if earned is the right word. And in the meantime, I also made a uh, like t-shirt design with a drill that you can find linked in if you are interested. Uh, so, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, that was kind of going pretty well. <laughs> okay, not too bad. Okay, so far so good. I think I want to drill another hole uh, right next to this and then it should give me enough travel for the switch and then I want to file off the edges a bit. So, yeah, let's do that. Not too bad, I guess. Let's see if the switches fit. Yes, they do. <laughs> and they don't protrude that much, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to clean this with some alcohol and put some scratches on the back side there. Because I want to epoxy my switches in, basically. So I'm just going to add some scratches with my screwdriver here. So the epoxy has something to grip to. So let's mix up some epoxy and get the board back in and try to glue <laughs> the little switches in place. This is like a five minute epoxy. Uh, so I don't have very long to apply. <laughs> let apply this to the switches here so we don't accidentally glue them in one place. This one should go here. And this one should go here. Okay, I clamped them down for a bit and I'm just going to add some more epoxy around. Yeah. Okay. Now this should cure in uh, like five minutes or something. Okay, let's remove the clamps here. Which are of course, obviously, a bit stuck. <laughs> okay. These are very nicely in there. Okay, fair enough. 
looking good. Let's see if they work. <laughs> or if we have to replace one of those. Okay, European. Japanese. Okay, NTSC. NTSC Japanese. Nice! Okay. So it totally works. Let's put it back together. As I said in the last video, you can determine for this LED, you can determine which lag goes where by seeing which leg is the longer one. The longer one goes on the red connector. The LED lights up. Woohoo! <laughs> Screws back in and we're done. So here we are. It's one of the neater jobs I've done. Uh, these are pretty tiny and so you can hardly see these switches while using it. But they are functional in that they can switch this from 50 to 60 Hz and uh, switch it to Japanese. And if you're interested in games you probably can see me uh, suck at Mega Drive games even faster at 60 Hz on my Twitch, which is linked in below. I have a, a streaming channel there where I regularly stream from uh, original hardware like this I repaired on this channel. Okay. So, yeah, so much for now. If you like this, please consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel, maybe. There's a lot of retro computer and retro console stuff still to come, and there's already quite some videos on there that you might find interesting. So, hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Peter. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye! Oh, this is a lot faster. <laughs>